Hyrox is owned by the company that owns Iron Man. They're very analytical German people. Oh my awesome. God. So they're just building the perfect humans. Yes, These right. sneaky Germans are That's like, right. Hi, we That's can't right. get away with this. Let's just start a competition and find them this way. I'm 25 and I can't get a boner and I poop myself. I'm like, this is death. It's not the WWE, which I almost was a part of. Really? They offered me a contract. I turned it down. Why? Okay. We have a very special guest in the studio today. If, um, you know, you're not watching this on YouTube and you're listening to this on the streaming platform, um, we have Hunter here. Oh, wow. Did you guys trade clothes? Hunter the Sheriff. He holds the world record in the workout called Murph. He uh, was on the list of the 50 fittest men. Thank you. Okay. We know what time it is. Um, and uh, we are here to learn. We are here to banter. And we are here to get to know Hunter. Well, thanks for having me, guys. I was going to say, did you guys trade clothing? Because usually Val's wearing representing here. I, I had to show up and make sure. And I'm, I'm glad that you didn't take my swag because this right here means a lot. You like this pony right here? Oh, I do yeah. enjoy it. It's like very Marlboro. Yeah, dude. I, I, I like honestly it. think like all American style right here. This is really kind of speaks to my soul. Horses. And that speaks to your soul. I'm assuming that this you're way, it's kind of like a, a queer. And the, <laughs> also the baggy kind of. I hide my body, but underneath my it's clothing, tone. I look like this. <laughs> we probably so had the same workout today. I mean, obviously. I mean, listen, I the place that we're in right now, obviously you don't probably need to work out that much. You've got a lot of swag and pull, I'm assuming. Do you think working out when you first started working out, it was to get laid? Everybody starts that way. Right now. No, is anyone just like, oh, I'm getting so much pussy, I should get in shape? Here's this really weird world of being in LA. I go out all the time and I see men that are on the Richter scale in comparison of looks to me, 10% of my value. But they are with a girl who's a dime. So obviously cash doesn't like there's a these women value something different than this, this avatar that I've got going on. This I'm is just all, a plus. Yeah, exactly. I'm all muscle and hustle. Like you'd imagine that that would really pull in the right woman, but out in this community, it doesn't matter. But that's why I also hustle like a madman. I win world titles. I got my own businesses and I had to create value elsewhere. But um, yeah, man, the body doesn't fucking matter at all. Now that I'm in LA, I recognize that it doesn't like there's dudes in their sixties getting way hotter girls than I've ever Like legit pulled. lagoon animals pulling, oh. pulling dimes. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, I, I, you know, I, a hot guy isn't going to get me into a suite at the Super Bowl, right? And that's, that's unfortunately true. how everyone thinks. That's true. I'm not saying you can't. I'm I've just saying, but, 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 but hot dudes ne most of the time are broke. Yes. Right? So usually a girl's like, ha, hey. if she lands a hot, successful guy, she's usually a celebrity. You David Beckham is a hot successful guy. And he's got to be worth billions. Yeah. Yeah. And that guy, that guy's one in a billion. Honestly, if you think about it, like I really can't think the highest performers that I know do not have bodies like this at all. And you have to make that sacrifice. You have to make this decision. Right. It's like, are you going to put your time towards business and hustling? Or are you going to put your time towards having a six pack? Do you think that that correlates in both worlds though? The older I get, I'm going to be 40. I'm trying to work out for my 40th birthday in June. Like every day I'm trying to do some activity, whether I go to like, I go to F45, you know, the fucking Australian gym. So I go to F45 uh, I try to go every day. I think at this age, having that exercise routine does help the business side. Cl mental clarity and all that shit or just having the energy. And also, you know what? It's fun not having to hold your breath to tie your shoes. Yeah. Because like I used to have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like literally like I can't. I have to like, you know. Good Painful. mobility, by the way. Well, you know, I can't do that. 40 days of F45. I can't do that, he said. Dude, you can't do that? I will tell you. No, I'm just, I'm literally a piece I, of steel. I'm like athlete number 49 on that list. Then. That's right. Yo. Dude, I will tell you this though. There is a new era. Think about it. Like when you originally looked at the pictures of like Jeff, have you ever seen the old pictures of Jeff Bezos, Peter Thiel, and Elon Musk and the way that they look now, now that they're mega billionaires? So there's this new movement where I believe these people go through this grind phase and then they get out on the other side and they're like, I've lost this whole thing to have this other thing, which yes. is millions, billions, whatever it may be. And now there's this new era of like the entrepreneur hustler slash like, you know, go get it kind of attitude. Yes. And that's where my world is. Like the guys you originally um, kind of found me through this guy, George, who founded represent this dude is literally working out as much as I do and running one of the biggest apparel up and coming apparel brands. I in the follow world. him because of you guys. Well, Val. Yeah. But he's 30, right? 
He's, he's got 32? the energy. He's got the energy. Yeah, but but he's got the energy. But maximizing your athleticism and also running the brand and having discipline and scaling everything yeah, at the same also, time, it's very difficult. Yeah, yeah. But you're forgetting the main difference between all those CEOs he named is they're not in the lifestyle business. He is. Yeah. So part of his brand is True. being in shape. I right. Like, like, like uh, that's why I always say that when people are like, yo, I'm a CEO, I'm an entrepreneur. You see people on Instagram, you know, everyone lies. You know, everyone likes to be like, an entrepreneur now. Everyone yeah. claims to be CEO. Yeah. I'm like, this is what like entrepreneurs <laughs> supposed to look like. Yeah. Like Jeff Bezos, <laughs> like Elon Musk, like me, until we come out the other side and then we get in shape. So I have a hard time with like uh Yeah, but you started out like that. Like what? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was never You're, pretty. Yeah. I was never pretty. I yeah. knew that. I you knew came that. out the wound like this. You know what I mean? But I think if it fits your brand, like like Val and I talk a lot business, right? And he's, you know, he's out here in LA. He moved to LA. He gave up a whole New York lifestyle. And he's like, I'm trying to find some other alternative incomes. And maybe I should do some sort of clothing one day. Maybe I should do uh, what should I do? Because you used to have the Russian brand. I, I had the clothing brand right. too as, as well, yeah. And, and you know how to push it. And he, and I was like, dude, you're obsessed with this fucking represent brand. Why don't you, like, you're a lifestyle kid, work towards something like that? Because it's on brand for you. You work out every day. I just it's can't, be easy it's to hard sell. to incorporate humor because my you whole thing is- humor. He doesn't incorporate humor. It just has to that's feel like part of your is. lifestyle, right? Yeah. Like, I speak. wouldn't buy um, fucking TVs from you, but if you sold me- like workout shoes or workout pants, I'd buy them from you because it's part of your lifestyle. And I and you are a proven product. I'm like, obviously this guy knows what he's talking about. If it's authentic though, dude, you can get away with it. That's the right. beauty of what's going on nowadays. Like you can have an idea right now and in 24 hours have a Shopify up and almost be pr making pre-sales on products. Like it is so cool. Yeah. I'll be sitting there with my friends and we're just like building up all these ideas. And by the end of the day, I will literally buy a website and attach a Shopify to it. And that's the way that the world is right now. Like it's You're the right. beauty of it all. Like you can literally call manufacturers and have a pre-order done within the next two weeks. Yeah, it's true. We literally launched a business two days ago. Like the sport that I'm in right now, it's called High Rocks. You go all around the world. It's a mixture of running and gym uh, tests. What, what, can I, uh, what does that mean? Like uh, the sport you're in, do you get I paid? Can, I compete professionally. Okay. Yeah. So I run for a living professionally, travel around the world. I've been doing it for 12 years. Originally I started in running, then I got into CrossFit and now I'm doing this kind of hybrid sport of it So all. let me ask, I kind of know how runners make money if they're like end up in the Olympics, but even then they barely make money unless you're yeah. like, you know, some crazy person. Like, are you, what kind of running are you doing and how does that world, because I'm just a Jew and I'm curious. <laughs> yeah. I'm just curious because it's so cool to monetize what most of us are just doing when I have diarrhea, right? Yeah. I'm just running. Well, I specialize in this conversation because I, a couple of years ago, maybe about six years ago, I was starting to do, starting to do pretty well for myself and I'm flying first class and you're sitting next to a person because now it's the spread of what used to be four seats or six seats wide is now just down to two seats. And the person sitting next to you goes, what do you do? And I, I'm like, well, I'm like, what do you do? And they're like, oh, I'm a lawyer. Or I run this business. Or I'm head of marketing. They're like, what do you do? And I was like, I run for a living. They're like, that's a job. And I just kept on encountering this conversation. I got fed up. I was like, I'm no longer going to be in this seat and have to explain myself. Do you just lie? No, no, no. no. <laughs> I mean, I, I I've do. gotten to the point where I've done that, but I'm like, I don't even want to get into this conversation. I'm just going to lie and say that I do marketing like you do. Yeah. I, I became this goal of mine so that every single time I bump into somebody, they don't have to ask who I am and what I do. I want to make sure that the industries that I'm in are big enough that you're not confused. You're like, you know, actually, I, I have heard about that. I do know that and wow. I know what you do. Like I, same way if like you told me you run a clothing brand, I'm like, well, I only know about Nike, Puma and this, like right. you have your own clothing brand. You're like, well, no, it's very plausible. Like everybody are popping up all these shops. So part of my mission in, in my career right now, like is one winning, which I'm the best at the world at. I've won 10 world titles and I whoop everybody's ass. That was great. <laughs> I love that. But the other aspect of it is I want to leave this place knowing that when I walk away, that it doesn't just crumble behind me. Like, I want to make sure that I've made such an impact through YouTube, media, connections like this so that people don't have to be confused when I show up what the fuck I do. And like, that's been my double responsibility in this lifetime is win everything I fucking get my hands on. And secondly, make sure that you don't get confused when I tell you I run if that's a real job or not. Just to explain how my career works. Yeah, that, um, I'm literally just super curious because like I said, I only know the mainstream and I know there's a billion ways to make a dollar. It's for, hard for people to understand. It's like, there, explaining, it's like explaining 
sense to my grandma. Yeah. Is no. essentially right. Respect That's that. what's happening. I much ran into the same exact thing. I was going to college. I was like, what the fuck am I doing in college studying all the time and trying to run? I was like, all the best people in the world just run. So why am I putting books in the way of me getting to my goals? So we dropped out of college. We came back out here to the West Coast, where obviously the West Coast is the best coast. It's where the fucking champions are made yeah. in every degree. Well, you know what I mean? You're out here. It's uh, like, it's, it's this is work release for me. This is well, like prison. Well, I, here's my thought. You're on from this. which? You're from the East Coast? I'm from New York in Connecticut. Okay. So I was Dude, born in the Upper East Side, raised you? in Connecticut. How dare you denounce your New York? <laughs> I love New York. I think there's something genuine about the characters. Like, I can tell immediately there's something right. different about you guys than the people out here. Rassles. But yeah, that's yeah. right. But it's genuine. Yeah. But from the standpoint of like chasing dreams, man, the sun shines differently out here. Yes. And you just wake up in the morning. You're like, I'm going to get the fuck after my dream. Look, I'm a fat kid and I'm way more motivated to work out here because when I walk out of my house to go work out, it's not negative 20 degrees. That's exactly Dude, what he's saying. Yeah. So like, I love the New York hustle, but for your industry of looking good and training, there's no excuse I'd be like, not there's to a be out there. I'm, I'm, yeah. So the day I quit New York City, I used to work out at Fifth Avenue CrossFit up in like the 30s on Fifth Avenue. And I had a home uh, apartment down on 19th Street. So I'd walk back and forth every day when I was done with my workout. I'd walk across the street, get a coconut water and a protein shake. So coconut water was in a metal can. I was walking a couple blocks and I popped the thing open and the rim froze. And it was that cold that day. And I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Now, when I'm out here, dude, I was running shirtless. It's literally like what, twice February. as cheap to live here. Oh, yeah, clearly. Um, no, <laughs> dude, I have the $7 theory. Everything in California is $7. $7 for a gallon of gas, $7 mm. for a cup of coffee. You get fucked every way. New York's yeah. still more expensive, though. I, I had an apartment in New York the size of this table for the same price, the house we have in living LA. Wise, you go, you go, yeah. you get you get more for your buck here. Yeah. Why? You think everything else is more expensive here? Yes. Gas is more expensive. Well, we Travel's don't think about gas in New York. And also you don't, don't forget cars. things are not as close, right? So you end up actually making up for like all the money you spend. You basically get clipped because you're traveling 24 seven. California gets you. Yeah. Yeah. There's different ways. But, Sorry, so, I just want to get you back on the pace. Yeah, of yeah. Where are we talking about how you make your money so that you can explain? So I have a circuit. Every single year, we basically have the world championship and everything's backdated from that. Everyone has to qualify for the world championship, you know, much like the Olympics. It's not based on the fact you're part of a country. You have to qualify. So you could have literally 15 people qualify from just America alone and nobody else gets to qualify. And what are you just doing? That's just running? Well, it's a mixture. So okay. we have High Rocks is owned by the company that owns Iron Man. You know, Iron Man? Yes. So they're very analytical German people. They want to see like there's CrossFit, which oh is my awesome. God. So they're just building... The perfect humans. Yes, These right. fucking sneaky Germans are That's like, right. Hi, we That's can't right. get away with this. Let's just fucking start a competition and find them this way. Oddly, blue, blue eyes. eyes. Blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I was starting of, to tingle when you walked in the room. I know. Like, Wait a second. So they took like CrossFit's functional fitness. They say they're the fittest on earth, but they're like, it's that's too random. We can't like, you never know who's better each year because it's random tests every year. So they took all the Olympic and world championship level sports. So the first station's skier, like Nordic skiing. Next one, sled push, like Bob sled. And every station's meant to represent a sport. You run a lap, a thousand meters, and then do a station. And you repeat that eight times of different stations. <sighs> Start to finish, who's the fittest person? And you take, I hold the world record at 53 minutes. How many laps? Technically, it's just under 10K of 53 running. 53 minutes? 53 minutes are just fucking blitzing it. Is it treated like other sports? Are there weight categories? Or it's just like, yo, if you have a penis, you're in the men's category. Yes. You well, have a vagina, you're in the women's. And it's a free for all based on height, age, whatever. The highest level, yes. It's like, it doesn't matter your size, anything like that. It's just, you've qualified at the highest level, the highest yeah, weight. you're looking for the, the singular test. best yep. person in the world. And they measured everything out. And they said, based on these metrics, this will find the fittest person. Now, when you're doing like, if you just showed up and did your first one, there's categories that are lower. So you don't just like get kicked in the nuts as hard as they could possibly do first time. But when you train a bunch, then you'll qualify for our pro waves. And then if you compete there, then you can qualify for majors, which is the next level. And you compete there and you qualify, you go to worlds, which is the highest level. So I travel around the world doing about six to 10 of these races a year on behalf of this company and companies that sponsor me. And I get to travel around the world and just whoop ass dude that's so fucking wild yeah. i love how open you are about being the best though i love that, that you have I mean, this if fucking you're the best why would exactly. you keep that a secret i hate the word humble because i think it's so often misused like i am humble to the point where it's necessary like i don't walk in the room and tell people that i'm rich you're wearing a number one hat yeah yeah right? I'm, like, I'm not rich i'm successful i'm rich in olympic like and world championship titles and i will tell you i'm rich in that degree because i work harder than anybody else 
And I'm not going to lie about what I'm proud of. I woke up this morning and I fucking beat my body to death for a race that I'm going to run in 16 weeks. And I'm proud to be here on this podcast and tell you guys I'm number one. And I'm always going to be fucking number one every time I, I show I love up. It. Are you your own trainer? No, I've got a coach. You have a coach that oh, what, yeah. meets you in the gym. And he do, he and I will build about six to eight week blocks and we'll meet up about twice in that block and we'll test everything. So he gives me homework and like, you know, much like if you were studying for a school test, like you're not going to get tested every single day because you'll just be exhausted. You're not absorbing the material. Yeah. So we'll do moderate levels of work for three to four weeks and then we'll do a huge test, moderate level of work for three to four weeks and then another huge test. And we're always trying to kind of basically shoot towards that Olympic gold medal style. I notice your hide fucking uh, wristband. How often are you abusing your body versus uh, just keeping it clean, right? Is that oh, from this is, partying? Oh, this is a race wristband. I party like a madman, though. I thought man, that, though. that looks like the hide VIP wristband, no? No, but I will tell you, I, I do. I thought you were, a, I was like, oh, shit. I, I, I still do party last like, night. I still do party like a madman. Yeah. Because it's necessary for at least me. I live in the devil of two worlds. Like, I need absolute chaos and I need absolute containment and like just i can't live without one or the other you know what i mean i respect it though is there something you deny yourself that helps your career like oh, are yeah. you like i miss doing this or eating this or having this in my life but i no longer can because that's the sacrifice i make i miss for my, my career i miss my social life and my family like my family lives on the east coast mm. i had to leave them knowing that this was the pursuit that i was going to take on my cousin's baby shower is in two weeks I'm flying in for 48 hours. I'm going to come in watch them throw pink shit all over the air. And then I'm out. And now everybody else is sitting on the couch and drinking booze and everything. I was like, guys, I came here to see you, tell you, I love you. And then I'm gone. See you later. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I got a mission. How and old are you? I'm 34. Yeah. You're young. You know, I, That's I respect part of the that. fun lifestyle though. That's, I love it. You know the difference though? You got to look at it from this angle. While the rest of the family sits on the couch and leads a more of a suburban life yep. that you get to fucking fly in. You have the luxury of getting on an airplane, which a lot of people don't have. Show up, hang with the family, bounce and go back to your world and keep building your career. And meet so many people. And it's cool, right? Like yeah. as much as I want to stare on my family, a lot of times I'm like, dude, it's kind of dope that I just fly in and fly out. I hung with them and I'm going back to do my thing and they do theirs. I love doing that in New York too. I technically, I also own I'm a barbershop in New York. So I cut hair. That's kind of like my, that was my bread and butter. That was yours. Might need your help. Yeah. That's yeah. I'll, I heard about your, uh, your uh, mullet Man. situation. So yeah. I want to bring that back for you. I was going to offer that to you. I need to enhance it. Yes. What? I you will make a... it look really good for you if you'd like. Um, and that's why I'm bringing this up. But basically I love flying back and forth also. Like I love popping in, seeing all my clients, seeing all my people, and then just coming back to the West coast and being warm and working out here and having a balanced lifestyle. You know what I mean? Even though I miss my mom and I miss my family. When I lived in New York, I felt so stagnant if I was out four nights a week and everyone saw me because they'd be like, look, there's a loser. He's still in town. Yeah. So when I was in New York and I had all those gigs and I'd fly around and I could only make it out on like one night and, you know, kiss some babies, touch some hands in nightclubs. It was like, bro, you just had this. You had that. So it felt exciting. Yeah. I felt like a loser when I could hang out with everyone yeah. versus like, oh, I'm just so busy. Like I only get to see you guys once in a while. Listen, I'm not the kind of guy who's ever going to be sitting in one place and just like feeling content with life. But that that would be the only thing that I miss. Otherwise, I, I feel like I, I'm blessed every single day. I wake up excited. And mo most people don't get that. No. They nope. wake up and they just get on that treadmill of life. They're like, yep. fuck, I got to make it through another lap. Yep. Me, every single day I wake up and I'm just like, I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to fucking butt fuck this workout this morning. I'm going to go hang out with these guys, do this podcast, crush it drink some beers, get back, crush some more life, and then, you know, on to the next chapter. Honestly, that's the best feeling. All right, you're a little too happy for me. <laughs> Dude, uh, I have to say, honestly, by the way, this is really good. Yeah, happy dad is good. It's Congrats. a good drink. Death Row Records, dude. I really That's the like collab this. with Snoop Dogg. I don't I can't drink any of that stuff. I well, mean, I, I love it. Happy Dad is good. Happy Dad is good. I just don't, like we discussed earlier, I need hard liquor to the face fast. Did you see Snoop Dogg is suing Walmart and another place right now because they he made it uh, like a, a serial collaboration with them and they made it too expensive. It's ten dollars a box. Yeah, because it's they got to pay royalties. They don't have to pay royalties on Raisin Bran because they own it. Yeah, that's right? the problem. They got to yeah. cut in Snoop. Snoop wants a piece. They're like, my man, we can't sell the cereal for the same price as the shit we already own. Homeboy's doing everything. He crushes. He's got to be probably <sighs> top five most successful people in the entertainment business. Yeah, 100%. he just stamps his name. I'm surprised he doesn't have his own like George Foreman grill. Yeah. Snoop is a beast though. He, he really is. he really crushes it for sure. And the NFT oh, space they just that started, he got into. They started their own um, uh, drink. 
Him really? and Dre called Gin and Juice. They should have done that a long time ago. It's called Gin and yeah. Juice and it's coming out. Who do you think is the most successful person in the entertainment industry? It's got to be Swift. Taylor Swift. Yeah. Taylor Swift. Or I like personally the, think Drake. Really? You, you know why? Taylor Swift is definitely uh, probably cash no. flow more no. is, uh, than Drake. But Drake had the fastest growing yes, come up because he... This guy also hides a lot of his money. He doesn't. No, no, no. We're talking about know? most like famous. No, we're talking about like who's really pulling it in. Because oh, I remember Taylor Drake Swift. is pulling at one it point, in. I was listening. I, I love Howard Stern. I was listening to Howard Stern. This is like three years ago before COVID had hit. Ed Sheeran had made like $280 million touring in less than six months. It was only, I think you're just like, still Taylor what? Swift, guys. Taylor Swift will always beat it because the world is still racist and Drake is black. You think that's the case? That's the case. Taylor no Swift is the most packed. Stop. Uh, probably the most successful entertainer. Dude, is some everywhere Korean I pop go, star. there's just like white chicks bumping Drake. Yeah. Everywhere I yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, but I'm telling you Drake. Yeah, but Val, if you look at her last tour, they said she would change the economy of every city she arrived yes, in. Yes, you're right. I okay, Do you understand? But I'm talking that's about insane. all She brought 300 million to the NFL. Drake... Has he, never brought that attention to a game. Maybe music wise, yes, you're right. But she, yeah, white, all the side hustles, she's I think Drake. White. Makes, Do you white, know how many white business chick, lawyers she has? White you chicks think rule the world. You think Taylor Swift just makes music and has like 400 million in her checking account? Or do you think all that money is tied up in 30 other yeah, billion right, investments? Right, fine. No problem. Ta we'll give it to Taylor Swift. And Drake's Drake, Canadian, so he's working with like an inflict. You know, there's Drake a whole, is top uh, three for sure, though. I'm not sure. But number one is going to be Taylor Swift. Right you know now. my favorite human being on the planet is, is DJ Khaled. I do not know what that man does. And he's just fat and fabulous everywhere. He's always like in the back of his phantom with his shirt off. Yeah. Just yelling. yelling around. I'm like, you know what he is? What do you do? He's like a he's like a gallery owner. He puts all the artists together. So he's like, let me build you this thing. He's a he's like a conductor. That's fascinating and amazing. He's a middleman. He's a middleman. I, but like those kind of connections are important, right? If you can pull all those artists get, together. If you can put it together. You should get a piece of the pie. He's my favorite person in the entertainment industry. He's like if I could out. spend a day with anybody, it's him by I far. I find that he would be annoying probably within three minutes. Really? Come on. But if you could just you sit like back, humble people, that is literally the opposite of humble. But that's what I'm saying. Like, just spend a moment. Like, do you ever see like a person who's on drugs on the side of the street, just totally whacked out, and just be jealous of them for just one minute? No, like, yes. I could just I, so that's not him. Ditch you know, my life and just do yeah, this. Like, nah. Just one day. Just yeah. give me one day. Like, but yo, that. let me tell you something you, about Cali. You were born in America. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm born in Russia. So, like, he reminds me of every annoying um, Russian uncle be that that is just like gaudy, full of themselves. Uh, I th I find him incredibly entertaining. Don't get me wrong, but like also wouldn't be able to hang out with him. Too but long. to be fair, the, I wouldn't take the fool of himself too far. It's so sarcastic the way he said, does this. I think it's all spiel. game. I think it's just the bullshit game. Like I never look at him and get annoyed. Like May Mayweather bothers gets, you. It starts getting me like why? I start getting like. Why does I'm Mayweather like, oh. bother you? Because you know why? Because Mayweather he, he has this thing because he's an athlete. And just when he starts saying something, I'm like, wow, I want this kid to get cracked. The one day, just somebody crack him. Yeah, but, he, one time. but, but Mayweather has been punched in the face for a living. I, he deserves a little bit of brain type damage. Of arrogance. That's what I'm trying to say. Khaled doesn't get that out of me. Khaled's like, oh my God, you're yeah, the best. Like, I just want to. Mayweather knocked people out for a living and made like hundreds of millions of dollars doing it. That's. I would want you to but be like a Jake Paul's arrogance versus uh, DJ Khaled's arrogance. That's two different arrogance. I think yeah. Jake Paul and, and, and uh, Mayweather fall into the same category for me. I, people Celtics. will not like this, but I feel like they're more entertainment fighters than like real trophy fighters. Correct. I feel like for some reason, and I don't, I'm not like a big boxing fanatic, but I get what you're saying. I just feel like they kind of just rode their way in because they're characters. Right. But I think that's important for the business side, right? At the end of the day, nobody's watching the WNBA, right? But they're wanting, because there's nothing interesting have happening. You, have you guys so ever like, heard of netball? No, what is that? I've never fucking heard of netball, but now because I compete in the UK all the time, there's a sport called netball, which is basketball for chicks, but they don't dribble. <laughs> and <laughs> I didn't think it was fucking anything. And I, I started, started hanging laughing. out How with you these chicks. The ball? What? <laughs> these chicks are smoking hot. They're beasts and they fill out arenas. I don't know why none of us know about it. I don't know about this. But they are so fucking hot. You're like, whoa. Beautiful chicks, beasts, and it's popular. It's like a global sport, but it, it's like almost like cricket. Like we don't play cricket over here. We don't give a shit about cricket, but like the number one most followed person on the internet, I think is a cricket player from like India. Yeah. Well, Indians, you know. Yeah. But I'm just trying to say it's one of these hard. kind of things. We don't know. We don't yeah. know. I, I, don't, don't know. I don't think uh, the anything sexy sports wise works in America because we have too much access to porn. Like I don't want to watch a bunch of hot girls do anything but suck dicks. 
Really? Right? Like, what, I want to see you throw a basketball? Like, come on. I'm Do trying you really to care. I would get, yeah. I'm like, mm. Cause I could, I'm not going to, I would get turned on about like, I'm going to go, I'm going to go get one of those girls. I don't look at porn stars where I'm like, I'm going to go get one of those yeah, girls. Yeah, that doesn't really, that, I, to me personally, I don't give a fuck about that. Like, you? it doesn't what? Really, you seem like you're the kind of guy who get like that. He's like, a little jerker, my, you know? He's like a suburban guy, just always been jerking. I just don't want to be <laughs> horny the, enjoying sports. You're just a, a goon. Like, if I was going to say, if I was gay, I couldn't watch the NFL. I'd be like, my boner is not like. I couldn't watch a, I couldn't watch a season of it, but I'm just saying, like, when you guys mentioned the WNBA, I was like, yeah, it's not that, it's not much of a thing for me. But when I saw this netball thing, I was like, why is it they took Marketing, out dribbling? And that's why DJ Khaled, I mean, that's why Floyd Mayweather and Jake Paul help their sport they're in is because they add entertainment to a otherwise just an athletic competition, right? And the same way WNBA is just an athletic competition. There's no entertainment value there. The entertainment. But netball, full entertainment value because, you know, throwing some high heels and throw some balls around. Now I'm interested in your sport. I'm not going to lie. That's part Barely. of the reason why I talk so much shit and I'm a little bit louder on the internet because I recognize what I do is milk toast. It's not going to ever be that exciting. It's about the idea of the buildup leading up to it. Yes. So I've always been the most prolific, loud, wild. Is there shit in talking face. in your industry? For me exclusively. Well, that's how you stay uh, a star in any field, right? Is you have to be ex like just being good at what you do isn't enough. But your it's shit talking doesn't it. bother me though. Selling it is important. Your shit talking gets me motivated. I'm like, yep. wow, I fuck with this guy. Yep. It, it doesn't turn me off where I'm like, yo, this guy's irritating me. To no. me, it's like, yo, I I'm really trying to run with him. Like I'm like, yo, can I pull up to Malibu and go work out with you? Yeah, that's that type of shit talking is good. Yeah, it's it's progressive. Well, it's honestly it's authentic. Also, everything that I'm saying, I'm really thinking. I'm not sitting there and writing down a sheet of paper. I'm like, I got to get out there and say this and this post and all this kind of stuff. It's not the WWE, which I almost was a part of. Really? Yeah, yeah. Would you, would you? They offered me a contract. I turned it down. Why? I Because it was such dog shit. But, but I have Macho Man Randy Savage tattooed on my ribs. Like, oh, like, shit. I oh, wanted shit. to be a WWE star. Oh, fuck. So why yeah. do you think a shit contract would have, what, hurt your chances in there or it's not even worth the you didn't want to do it listen i am the, the mindset of like freedom i've always needed a little bit more freedom i'm not good with structure i always got in a lot of trouble when i was younger this contract is like Ironically, might as well be litigious shackles like they own you forever nah, yeah they own your name so hunter mcintyre is there is theirs forever anytime something comes off of that character that they create is is theirs forever it was low pay. It was low incentive, meaning like they're like, we're not going to really tell you you've got much of a, we don't have a, a broad, like a forecast for you of where this is going to go. We're just going to see if it we works out. We don't know about your future. Yeah. yeah we'll and see. I, was, I was like, what? So yeah, I, I mean, couldn't do At it. the end of the day, right? For, as a fan, you're like, this looks so much fun. But then when the business side happens, you're like, oh, like this takes the magic out. Do you, do you read this shit? Uh, I just read it the other, last night. This is why Wild, you brought that up that they own like the name. Is that uh, Marvel? sued uh wwe or f for hulk hogan because they own the word hulk no back in the day and for eternity marvel gets 50 percent royalties on all merchandising hulk hogan shit they cut a deal wow. and this is the weirdest one they got a hundred dollars for every time he uh was in a match and so just a hundred dollars yeah what kind of that's more of like a stick it to you. It's like, yeah, like hey, where's you know, my hundred? We're taking a piece, but where's my yeah. hundred? Is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Where's my hundred? That's what I said to my boy Russell. I'm that like, was just sick. some dick lawyer who just yeah. put that in there. He's like, and a hundred dollars. It's different now, right? Like you're able to control your own destiny with social media. Maybe 20 years ago, that contract would have been exciting because you're like, how else am I going to build a living? Right? Yeah. Are those, these people going to put me on TV? Yeah, because you could have market yourself. Media, now right? you can market yourself. So yeah, I guess at the end of the day, you made the right decision because you get to control your narrative more. Hey, it's not off the table. I'm waiting for the call. Dude, <laughs> there it is. What is the background of this podcast? Is there like a, is there like a, no. I'm saying like, where, where did you guys create it? Where does it go? What's your guys average uh, interview? Dude, so I, Started all this shit before the podcast, always just doing parties, oh. taking crazy photos, uh, hanging out with wild girls for yes. a long time. He was since a photographer from since start. Since 2009. By the way, I believe a camera is the key to a great lifestyle. If you're good with a camera, especially with babes, you're set. Yeah. If you can make someone look good, everyone loves you. Yeah. Like from, you know. I toured with every artist on top of every hooker. It's like, as you make them look good, they love you. 
And then 2017, 33, I was like, what am I going to do with my life? I can't do these parties forever. I'm going to yeah. get old. I need a life. And I started a merch brand. And then I kind of came up with Assholes of Forever. This is it now. This is all I do. We run this brand out of this fucking house. It's fire. It has a it's huge uh, warehouse in Mexico. It's a huge warehouse in Mexico. The brand is the new thing. This is me. Yep. More people now know me as Assholes Live Forever than Kirill, who used to pour champagne on naked girls at parties. Really? Yeah. And it completely eclipsed it. I went from living a normal life, like a good life in New York, making, you know, a couple hundred grand a year doing that to, you know, this company at this point, what do we have? Like 150 employees total and probably do like 12 Holy to 20 shit. million a year in sales. It's 300,000 square feet. Yeah. The yeah. House, it's huge. So it's, it's a different beast. I had a similar um, moment, by the way. I'm running professionally full time and COVID hits and we would get these training homes in Boulder. I li I've lived in Malibu for the past 12 years. It's always my hub and I always have my house here, but we go up into the high altitude camps up in Boulder where all the professional runners go. COVID hits and usually we rent out these total dog shit houses like the walls are made of paper mache. I go from making 300, 400 grand a year from running down to less than three grand in a night. Like I get all these people call me. They cut all the contracts, everything. All my travel's gone. And I was like, oh shit. I just went from being like a king to broke. You're making three, 400 racks. You're crushing it. You're living life. You're like, this gravy train's not ending. Yeah. You start making no money the next day. Same with me, right? Yep. I went from having gigs to no gigs. Do you have savings or are you scrambling? Like what's the next? About 200, How much is, 200 grand in so the you bank. Have, you have enough to not... You're not homeless. I have a wedge, but it's like one of those kind of things where you just start looking at your lifestyle. I've got two cars. I've got two houses. I've got these bills. And you're just like, okay, so now it's basically like a funnel, like underneath my bank account. And it's just all pouring out like one of those sand dials. Yep. And you're like, I don't know how to bring it back up to the top because I've never had to think that far ahead. Everybody's always like, hey, man, it's this season. We'd like to back you with this cash. We'd like to see you at these races. It's and a I was slow just, growth, right? Yep. You slowly, your lifestyle changes slowly and it's hard to go back to nothing yep. and be like, now make all that money again from scratch overnight. I went off a cliff. It was like a, one of those kind of like booby trap tr doors that I just went straight down back to freaking square, square one. You know, the first couple of weeks, um, you know, I just started hooking up with this girl. So I was just like, all we did was like drink, fuck and work out. And it was like, it was paradise for a moment. You're like, there's nothing to do, whatever. Right. And then all of a sudden you just like wake up one morning and you're just like, wait, what are we doing? What's <laughs> happening right now? And you're just like, wake up and you're like, oh fuck, I think I'm fucked. And I don't think anybody's calling. There's no phone call coming to tell me when they're going to turn the lights back on. Right. I was like, I think I need to do this myself. So I sat down there with a beanbag chair. I had this is dog shit mattress and a beanbag chair and like a little nightstand. That was all was in this room. And I could touch all four walls from the center of the room. It was insane. It was so tiny. I just wrote down my three goals on a, on a whiteboard. And one was to break the Murph world record. Another one was to start a company where I sold one product a day. I was like, if I sold 30 products in a month, that that's some money. Right. That'd be crazy. And then the other one was to write a book. Still finishing the book, but I broke the Murph World Record what, and I a, started. Sorry, what's a Murph World yeah, Record? Yeah, can you explain Murph, to everybody? I have so, no idea what that is. So Murph was this guy. He was a Navy SEAL special, Ops, special operator. And there was this mission that was going on. There's a whole movie about it called Lone Survivor. Oh, that's him? Yeah, cool, yeah. Chris, right? Cool. So his name was? No, that's no. Chris. Chris oh, that's Kyle, the that's a different guy. Movie, right? uh, no, no, this one's Mark got Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg in <laughs> oh, it. Bad. And so it's got Mark Wahlberg <laughs> in it. And he's. What's the name of the other guy? It's like Czech something. I yep, don't know. I don't know. Uh, and it's this really iconic story about this guy who basically took did this like larger than life act for the rest to save everybody else. And he kind of went down in history as one of the most iconic special operators of all time. During his time that he was, uh, you know, training and you know was in special warfare, he did this workout that they called body armor. They, he he had to wear his flak jacket, which was bulletproof, you know, and had steel in it weighed about 20 pounds. He would do a one mile run. He'd do 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 squats, one mile run. And that was like his workout that made him ready for any battle. And then they basically picked that workout and they're like, we're going to do this workout every single year, you know, to commemorate this guy and the hard shit that he did. It was picked up by the military community and the CrossFit community. And it was globalized. Like in every, like you see, if you go watch a Memorial Day, celebrities all around the world are doing it. They have charities behind it. You know, if you remember when COVID hit, it was around March. Memorial Day is, I think, the first or the last week of uh, May. I can't remember now, but um, I just recognized, I was like, this is kind of an interesting period of time. I've got about two months to just, with nothing to do, 
might as well just go for it. And I set up a charity around it and I broke the world record and it was on, you know, Apple news, all these what? things. It was, it was really it well received. A, it's, it's, huge. it's huge. It's yeah. a big, big deal. Yeah. So it was, it was great. Um, I was you know super proud of it. And it was one of the things that got me through that really did, tough did time. Anything ha- winning that. What does that do for your career? I know what it does for your mental, right? Obviously yeah. like, Oh, I did something through the pandemic while everyone else is face down in pizza. Yeah. Does that help? grow the brand does more shit start opening doors again because you're like this is the re 100 percent right you, i mean listen you it's it's got to be the phoenix from the ashes like everybody was just sitting in the shit and i was one of the first people at least in our space that was like i'm gonna get the fuck up and do something i'm not gonna let these assholes tell us that we have to stay inside of our houses Correct. and wear masks and just fucking give up on our lives until they say we can start again and to be honest, there was a very large community behind that moment, like that, that idea that they're like, let's live. Correct. And so I started making YouTube videos around it and it got such fanfare that I think it kept a lot of people motivated during this time. And what it did was, was just, I think it allowed a lot of people to recognize that I'm not just a jock. Like I'm somebody who's willing to step above just working out and make something for the space. And that's part of the reason why I've had a lot of success in working with brands is because I was always going to show up and do more than just the workout or the race. I was going to help, you know, set up charities. I was going to help set up the content. I was going to help set up the whole network and the community and the event because I, yeah, I'm dedicated. It's crazy that you're like, you beat the world record, right? Because when you hear world records, I'm like, oh my God, this guy's got to come in looking like The Rock or something, right? Kevin Hart got asked this on Hot Ones where Sean asked him, you know, Hot Ones, the wing show, yeah, where they, wings, they asked them, um, what's your strongest muscle? And Kevin Hart said, my mental. Yeah. And he's like, it's, this is what drives everything. Do you think that your mental is that much stronger than, like, how much of it is really your physical it's tenfold strength? any other guy I compete against. That's, that's, what, that's, what's, that's what I'm saying. It's crazy that you're the best, you, you beat the world record. <laughs> And it's like, how attainable is it for a, for a human being to do what you did? Or they need that mental element too. Like, I don't have that mental element. Like, you're telling me if I just trained, I could get to you? Or is it genetics? Is it, like, what are the elements that make you so much better than me? And, I mean, I'm, and I'm asking you to be cocky. Sure. Do I have a great body and a great set of lungs and a great, like, you know, I've, I've had all the genetic tests you can imagine. I'm at the higher end of the field for sure. But does that not mean that there's thousands of other people like this? Because if you go to the Olympics every single year, there is literally cities of these people Correct. from around the world. They right. come from wherever the fuck they do in Dagestan, China, Russia, yeah. you know, Cuba, like, you know, places just, without Malibu as a distraction. Exactly, dude. And these people are mutants. They're everywhere, to be yeah. totally honest. Like on top of every single mountain, there is some mutant of a man or a woman up there putting in this kind of work and you just pray that they don't walk into your <laughs> boxing gym that day and beat the piss out of you just through whatever it was. Cause I had a really troubled past when I was younger. I think I just burned at a higher rate and just ran into more issues early on. So that by the time I get to something like a race or a challenge, I've already been there a, a thousand times where these guys have maybe been there only a hundred times, 10%. Meaning if not even you like, don't have to get over that anxiety as much as they do. You're beating them with yeah. experience. Yeah. Right. You've and already I'm lucky. done this shit. I, I went through shit young and you know, what's really interesting is most of the athletes I compete against, they got so burnt out young. I didn't really start my hard work career until I was in like in my early twenties, I was into really into drugs and I had to go to rehab and rested a bunch. Were you always in shape or are you ever fat? No, I was always in shape. I was always a kid that was like moving around a lot. I had ADD. They're pumping me full of fucking medication. I was just like, ping, 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 ping. but it was never focused. They, they, and then all of a sudden when I hit 19 and I recognized, I was like, wait a second. I was like, I have to kind of grow up. And they, you have that moment in college where you have to figure out where you're at. You're like, am I a lesbian, a goth, a jock? Like, what am I? <laughs> I'm all, and, all, yeah, all, I'm all of the above. <laughs> but then one day you just have to wake up and you're like, I think I got to align myself with something and start trying a little bit. And then all of a sudden the magnifying glass comes and it just focuses that point down. And I picked athletics. And it, from that point on, I was like, I didn't know I was a world champion, but I started fucking telling everybody like, yeah, I'm going to be a fucking world champ. And you just go, you start going. And I failed a ton. Like I've lost so much. And by the time I got good at it, it was one of these kind of things where like I wore it like a hat. It wasn't pretend like I, I, I owned that shit. 
And um, and they just kept going. It just kept snowballing into dude, more and more and more and more and more. Well, now, dude, it's 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 like a it's like um, it's a high. It, it's it's to me though. It honestly, it's a it's a day in the life. But here's the thing: you wake up and you don't follow and pursue your actions. Somebody else is gonna be fucking doing it. I swear to God, someone's working harder for your dream than you right now. Oh, one hundred percent, dude. I I make sure I remind myself that all the time. Like I, my sponsor's like, hey, can we go do this? We'll pay you this, and I'm like that amount of money does look nice, but there's that guy who's not getting offered that check that wants it. Correct. And he's churning that fucking butter. He's like, I'm going to kill Hunter next time. Exactly. And that's what I tell people all the time. That's why I even have these conversations with my girl. Sometimes I'm like, I know a hustler that told me, he said, it doesn't matter if you, if you make a hundred dollars a day or you make a thousand dollars a day, always treat the same paycheck yeah. the same every time like, do you remember uh when anthony joshua that gigantic fucking boxer got the shit beaten out of him by the mexican guy yes, sir so anthony joshua thought he was hot shit he was the most biggest name in boxing and everyone's like he's so handsome he's so cool he's such a winner driving around his range rover looking all cool all the time then this fat fucking mexican dude just beats the shit out of him cracks him and it's <laughs> yeah. because he just thought his shit didn't stink he just kind of stopped giving that same intensity and this dude in the in the you know in the shadows showed up, beat the shit out of him. Then this fat fucking Mexican dude thinks he's the shit, gives up, goes out partying all the time, and gets the shit kicked out of him. Next. You can't get comfortable. You yeah. can't get comfortable. That's but, the thing. Yeah, especially in a in a uh, physically dominated field. Not even yeah. physically, business too. You can't yeah, get comfortable. Like you're, if you're a hustler, you can't get comfortable because if you as soon as you get comfortable, somebody else is going to eat the money. Yeah, like he said. Well, you know it's I mean? just I, I think that also you can age out out of athleticism. Like you can't really age out of making music, right? If yep. you're a musician, you don't have to be comfortable, but you can be like, all right, at seventy, I'm still can be Jay Z. Well, yeah, right? depends on at the category. At seventy, it's going to be you know you'll be a, an, an athlete of a different category, right? Is that is that really what happens? Cause like, I'll be done, but you don't, you no, you won't. I will check out of the competitive stuff. I yeah, think yeah, I have but to. You will still be a human who cares about his body. Oh yeah. Who will still live a lifestyle that you don't really think about it, but people like me and Val are going to grow old with you. So all the things I'm watching, I'm not going to be watching 19 year olds working out. Now I'm going to be watching you working out because I can relate Totally. Right. It's the same reason I don't watch black porn because like I can't insert my white dick into there. I respect that. And that's why I'd watch you because I'd be like, all right, here's a 70 year old idiot who can only do four crunches with me. I'm okay. I have a question for you. Yeah. I got this question asked yesterday. So yeah. I, for the first time I ran 17 miles. It's a, it took I me. I saw that dude. I, I saw, saw you post that. about yeah. that. That's and, fucking hardcore. And, and it was, it was, it was pretty cool for you me. You don't look it, any different. Right. But it doesn't really matter. He's glowing. I'm glowing. <laughs> I got a tan. It was a, I also upslope half of it. I'm very proud of myself. Whatever. Point of the story is I ran for two hours. I came home. My girlfriend asked me, she goes, what do you think about? Oh, she's like, good what, question. She's like, what do you think about in those two hours? And I wanted to ask you, I have my answer, but I wanted to ask you if you're doing a long ass workout yeah. and it's brutal as fuck. I know that you're trying to survive through the workout, but what thoughts are going through your head? I'm going to answer this two ways. One, the long ass workouts, I tend to try to bring friends with me because it's a journey. Like yes. I want to have be inclusive. So I have like this wolf pack that I go ride with for like three or four hours every Sunday on our bikes. Fire. If I'm by myself, I try to just get like chill out with either like relaxed music or like good, good uh, books on tape. Now, the ones that I really have to channel my brain on like this morning, I had to do four by eight minutes at like five minute pace. Just like to, just to let you guys know that, that is that even mean? blazing hot fast. Very it's basically fast. what is what did you just say? You so I do eight Chinese. minute intervals, four rounds of them of what uh, running. And when I'm running, I'm basically, I'm over 200 pounds. So to run at this pace, at this size, it's unheard of. And I'm running it basically with, within a couple beats of my heart stopping. It's so hard. So I'm just hammering down. And that's where if you can get to that pace, that's where your body starts to adapt. It's like shocked by the experience and the muscles just start to like, like hulk out. You don't understand how fast he's talking about. We're yeah. talking about fucking fast. Like I, his weight, that shit is fast. What's bro. the number on the thing that you're running at? So I can relate. Uh, so I'll be running the equivalent about 12 to 13 on the on the speed. I can, I can handle a five or a six. That's admirable. In those that, pants. That's admirable. In these flip flops. And that's those, admirable. I can, do that's crazy. Seven, I can do 17 miles in these uh, on a five. That's yeah. admirable. <laughs> but I am in a position where then... If you go to my house, I have post-it notes all over the wall and every single interval I have to lock in on one post-it note and there's a message in there. 
And every single one's a different color because your brain's so frazzled. You have to lock in on a color and then it's your best, your main goal to lock in on one word at a time and try to get into it. And that's that kind of hyper focus where you that's, hear about Kobe shooting bat three pointers for yes. three hours. That's, that's what that's I'm trying a, that's to, that's what I want to know. Like, that's like anyone who's successful who sat here. We always say something's a little autistic about him. That's like a little level of like where you're just you have. That's what makes you better than the next guy, right? But it's Is like that you have a, that little. But he's a mental, stand-up comic, but he's just an athlete. Oh, stand-up comics have posted notes that they remember. And oh, I like, just mean that system of organization t- is a, is a you're. I'll there's, admit, there's, there's got to be something. There's a the, wire that's right. off or something. Give me but that's a good note. wire. Just give me a crazy post note that you have. Uh, well, I mean, listen. There's one that says kill the kill the R's. There's three guys I compete against Rylan, Ryan and Ronkovic. They're the three other best guys in the sport. They all start with an R. I fucking hate them. I don't really hate them, but I have to convince myself. For competition, to hate them. Yes. yes, I have to hate them. Um, bring the gold to the surface is another one. Like I just have like all of these quotes. I have the, I don't compete against guys that I race against anymore. I look up the people that hold the world record in every single sport that I do in my eight sports and I compete against them. So I, will hone in and lock in on a person's name. Bill Kazmaier was the best world's strongest man in the history of time. I lock in on Bo Jackson. I lock in on- So you have targets. Durant. Yep, 100%. And I don't think about the guys I compete against because they're not nearly as good as me, but I will, if I went head to toe to toe against Bill Kazmaier or Bo Jackson, there's a fucking like high, more than likely chance that I'll get knocked flat on my ass. So I pump myself the fuck up and I flex all my muscles. I'm like, fuck you, Bill Kazmaier. <laughs> yeah. And I, yeah. I like, I, 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 yo, when I'm <laughs> running, I literally inside my brain, I curse myself out a lot. You got I'm it. I'm literally yelling at myself saying, you pussy bitch. I'm like, you better fucking finish the shit. I don't want to see you fucking come short of this time or I can't. And I'm literally yelling at myself. My legs are, I, I remember this run uh, at 60 miles. For some reason, I felt them cramp up and I start feeling like I can't unbend them. So I ju- did a little hop and I try to unbend my knee and I'm like, oh, can't do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, no, I'm my fucking pop. The human pop brain muscle. is very smart in trying to do whatever it can to protect itself. Yes. And it doesn't want to have these breakthroughs. Like, so if you think about going into the gym, the only reason you grow muscle is by you're lifting weight so intensely that you're tearing the muscle and then your body hopefully is going to repair the muscle and be stronger next time. You have to do things that are physically and mentally outside of your body's capacity, which it doesn't want to do to all of a sudden become that freak. And I mean, I know this may sound odd to all these people watching and listening to this show. You guys can just take 1% of that idea and get better. Just 1%. You don't have to take as far as I do because I'm a world champion. But I guarantee that when you decided that you were like, I'm no longer going to be a photographer. I'm going to be a multinational business like runner. There were some decisions where you had to make these quantum leaps of decisions and, and behaviors in your life to right, get to, to change where you are now. so many behaviors. That's what I'm saying. Everything changed. I went from being a true r- with a camera to a r- with employees, right? And it's a lot more dangerous That's been to be very with r- me, by the way. With a word, the employees. Employees oh, is very the different. word. I was no, going to no, say. No, I thought no. we were killing the others. <laughs> I love that word. I have a playfully I, racist I, question for you that I don't want to lose because I'm a little high. But how awesome is it being white and beating black people at athletics? <laughs> Dude, I will say one of my proudest moments, because I'll just admit, so I went out, when I was younger, I went to military school. I was grew up in, in New York and Connecticut, mostly in Connecticut. All white people, by the way, all white people. I don't care what your color is. I don't care what you, where course, you come yeah. from, what you're into, whatever. I'm all inclusive. Now, all of a sudden, I get sent to military school because I'm in trouble. It's like 70% black kids. And I'm a little white boy. And these are straight up like guys ready to go into the NFL draft. Right. Huge. And I used to fucking, we, we we didn't know what racism wasn't at the time because we just were too young. We still had to fight all the fucking time. And I had to compete against this guy, Kurt Majit. Love the guy. Awesome. He was an NFL player, freaking this huge black guy. And I had to compete against him when one of these competitions, and he's just so much bigger than me. And it brought me back to those military school days where I had to sit across from a person who was like, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I don't know if I'm going to make it. Charge! And I had to, I not only had to fight him in a, um, a tug of war match and a wrestling match, and I got him both times. And it was one of the, like, I, I was traumatized because I literally went back to the days when I was a kid. And then I was in front of this man. Kurt, if you hear this, I respect you immensely. I'm glad <laughs> that I fucking beat you. But we, I'm, I'll admit, man. Like if you straight up just get to meet athletes and I've been around thousands of my lifetime, there's some people that are just built differently. 
It doesn't matter necessarily the color of your skin, where you come from. Black people fucking got some serious advantages in some ways. Major dominance, yes. Some of the fucking biggest freaks in the world come from those like Russian mountain towns. They are the scariest human they beings. They don't fuck those around. Are the black ever. Russians. Black yeah. They literally so call like, them. They literally call them the black Russians. Dude, I it's swear crazy. to God, it's true. You meet some of these people because I used to wrestle a bunch and I had to just compete. You just see them like their bodies aren't really built that differently. Dude, but they grew up next to fucking Chernobyl. Yeah, they, they just, literally have a little bit of uranium bodies. There's no like, joke. What's going yeah, on? They also, here's what changed for them. Right, twenty years ago, we live in America. You can have a career. Twenty years ago, they live in the woods. There's no career. Right now, these guys see because of the internet, you could be some fucking mongoloid from some stand part of Russia. You know. Dude, my buddy and then Eric Mukamet, huge. You know why he's one of the best? Because I, because speaking about the woods, he cha- he's a major, major wildlife like freak in, in a way as well. So he channels the whole forest thing. You, you you've to, got the yeah. You got the woods in you too. Part of the reason why I became a beast is when I had to go to rehab. Um, I recognized I kept on failing drug test after drug test after drug test, and I just sat down there with my program officer, and I was just like, "Bud, like I'm not gonna make it." Like, I need you to give me a job that's so hard that I'm going to I break free of this obsession with partying. And he got me a job as a logger. Now, I was about 160, 170 pounds, maybe, maybe that. I think probably 160 pounds, 5'10". I went and worked. My first day on the job was February. I showed up in a pair of jeans like this, little thin cotton gloves, and a pair of Merrill shoes in the mountains of Montana. These motherfuckers made me hike down the hill. And they're like, all right, time to find the wood. I'm like, what are you talking about? They're like, dig. And I had to dig through the snow to find logs and wrap chains around them all day long. And I went to 6'2", 215 in six months. Completely changed me. The thickness of my hands, I need to do that. the way my jaw looked, everything. Excuse me, I'm, I'm not as big as literally I used to be now. Like, but, literally. Yeah, You've but, probably had bigger hands around your dick. Dude, I literally, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I literally like big ass hands. <laughs> everything changed because you had to grab these cords. My fingers started to become like the thick steel cords that I had to grab. And I swear to you, that changed me. That was probably the part of the part of the reason why I'm as good as I am now is because of that job. Do you think that's what I always thought that when I wanted to get in shape, I was like, I just want to work for a moving company. <sighs> like I'll get paid and I'll get in shape. Yeah. You should start a fat camp. I would attend. I'll take you guys up. Come to Malibu. Honestly, I'll take care of you guys. I'll go to Malibu. Mal- the woods of Malibu sound way better than the woods of fucking Russia. Listen, you're offering. I'm going there. I don't know about him, but dude, I'm dead definitely serious. Pulling I up. love having people up there because one, I think I'm so lucky to have the space that I want to be able to show other people. Be like, yo, come check it out. If I, I show up, it's way better than if you show up because you're in shape. They're like, all right. But if I, I show want, up, they're like, if you do show up, I want one of those hats. I'm going to get, we have oh, a we're giving you, we're giving you a whole bag okay. regardless. Yeah. yeah. Still get that right there. I, I always run in hats and things like that. And I think based, Are you based single? on me. Yeah. Yes. Ish? I crush. Have you but, ever shit your pants working out? I've never shit my pants working out, but here's something I will tell you guys. <laughs> So I got this TV show where I got to travel around the world doing all the hardest races. It was called Boundless, super badass. I was, I signed on telling them I knew how to die, do everything. They're like, you know how to raft, you know how to rappel, you know how to cross country ski. I lied. Of course I know how to do yeah, all those once things. once you're there, what are they gonna do? They couldn't do anything. Such a like New I, Yorker. Yeah, it, it's so funny. They brought me to fucking Greenland, the hardest cross country ski race in the world. I show up there. They're like, where's all your ski equipment? I was like, what ski equipment? I was like, I'm a 25 year old broke kid. This is a television show. You guys got to help me out. I broke my skis in half. I had to run like it was all fucked. I had overtrained and fucked up my body so badly in that period of time that I had lost like my, my nervous system. Like it, my everything that was interconnected, the wires just started to disappear. And that's the worst, by the way. And you yeah. literally get depressed almost. It's like yeah, insane. It will fuck you up. So you yeah. got to be careful. Here's my warning, guys. <laughs> I shit my pants so many times that year that I, I, I can't even begin to tell you. I just be driving down the street and just poo would just pull out my ass. And I, I would be in bed. <laughs> I, I love it. I can't shit the bed, like everything. And I was like, I'm 25 and I can't get a boner and I poop myself. I'm like this is death. This is like the first signs of death. When you start pooing yourself, you can't get a heart on anymore. Yo, you're, like you're so on the way. funny. Oh, man. And uh, Wasn't Tim Tebow the host of that show? Uh, that was Million Dollar Mile. Tim Tebow was that. That was another project that was fucking crazy. I don't know why they spent the money on that. This one was just uh, NBC gave us a contract and Esquire gave us a contract and they're like, go travel around the world and do all these crazy races. Is that considered a reality TV show? Yeah, it was. I was on one also. So that's one thing we have in common. Dude, 
the Except best that wasn't on a bad ass show like that. Best year of my life. What was yours? Uh, Temptation Island. We were just like it, dating? It was like stupid like show. Basically, you have 12 single guys go after a couple's like chick. Like, so He's trying like to break up a couple. I'm trying to break up. I'm basically like the He's whole He's a record. temptation. Really? And I'm trying to tempt the girl that's in a relationship and they separate them in different houses. I turned the show down, obviously. That is some evil shit. You're very evil. <laughs> very evil. And the producers are like, you're not going to fight for her? Val, you got to do something crazy. When you're in that hot tub, think about what her man is doing on the other side of the show. Yeah. You get it. And I'll be like, yeah, but I mean, yeah. that's business. And uh, I made it to the end, but I was like, I'm not doing this. I'm like, I don't know what you guys expect me to do in these hot tubs. I'm like, I'm like, I'm going to befriend her and give her some advice. <laughs> that's Dude, that's most, how I felt. I was like, I almost want to get on The Bachelor, Bachelorette, whatever it is, and then show up and then just sit in front of the girl and be like, hey, listen, now that I have you, I just want you to know what you're doing is wrong. And like, you Yo, are sleeping so around with all these guys on television and no man's going to value that. Like, and I don't no. want you to lose this opportunity. You seem like a good girl and you're acting like Do a they get paid. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. So then that's really how is she any worse than a normal girl in New York sleeping around for free? Well, here's my thing, dude. I've met a lot of these girls that have come off these shows because you just kind of get in this reality realm. Yeah. It fucks them up for life. For well, life. Yeah, because their life. fame never comes. They That's the closest they've come to fame usually. And also right? you can't get that Unless serotonin you're the star. back again. Unless you you're the star and you can somehow blow out from that. But dude, let's be real. American Idol has been on for 400 years. I only know two people that ever won it that yeah. are household names. Right. So imagine all those people that came so close and then like, I got to go back to being a dock worker. I, I get it. Like you want that 15 minutes of fame constantly. Yeah. But it, I think these things are fucking people up because I've met a couple of the guys have been on the shows too. And you're just like, dude, like you're just a shell of a man. Literally. And everyone thinks you're the shit and girls want to sleep with you for sure. But you're but empty. You got absolutely nothing. You're kind of staring in the mirror all day long. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are we doing? Well, it's like, <laughs> it's like a guy with no purpose is pretty useless. Yeah, I mean, bro, right? these shows definitely fuck you up. I was supposed to be on the, uh, the challenge, but uh, I made it to the last interview and they're like, yo, you're honestly great because I'm just basically like Hunter in a way where I kind of like brag and I was just kind of yeah. like very like, I'll fucking bro, I don't care about these kids from Ohio. They got nothing on me. I'm a Ukrainian boy from Brooklyn. Like, what's up? They fucked with my energy. They're like, all right, we're going to put you up against these uh, contestants. And I didn't make it because Temptation Island wasn't a big enough show because the guy from The Bachelor took my spot. You're shitting me. And I'm like, bro, are you guys crazy? I'd burn this. Dude. Right. But I'm the like, difference is the difference is they're going for marketing. And right. if had you made a splash on Temptation Island, you could have overshadowed the but guy. I'm like, I'm like, but you get me in front of these guys at the challenge. And I'm like, bro, you really got me competing with a kid from Ohio somewhere from these fucking like. Dick so. with, yeah. But like if I'm casting a show. I need it to be the most absurd, wild yeah, show. Yeah, and that would be right? me at that time. Right, but they looked at your performance on Temptation Island and you had your chance to be wild. And so they're like, this kid's going to go too safe. No, it's not about that. It's the show wasn't big enough. They knew that I was wild because really? I was I was ripping everybody on the show. That's why they love me. That's why I even got the See, interview. See, to me, wild means like you shit in the hot tub, not because like you make fun of people. No, like, I mean, that's not always wild. You could still, you know, it's about the banter. I was ripping these guys. Like there was dudes coming into the show. I would just abuse them. Them, then they would lose their spot with the girl. It was like competition constantly. So I was kind of like blowing these guys out of the water. I was like, you got to find kid. a way to play dirty. Huh? You, yeah, have to play, exactly. you have to play dirty because what you're going on is not reality. you got to go in there and fully be like, they're going to manipulate me. They won't I let me on these shows. I mean, you crush. I'm, fr I'm best friends with the guy, uh, Jordan, who's been the champion like five times. And really? Yeah. And we hang out all the time. And I'm like, dude, like they won't let me on the shows because I just pillage. But that's because you... <laughs> <laughs> literally no it's not even a joke you would abuse them that's what i'm saying that's a, it's a different story when you got a serious guy or a serious like athlete at that level coming into a show like that they're like have you guys yeah, ever seen that have you of guys course. ever seen broken skull ranch so you were part of that show three-year champion undisputed no one touched me and Can they kept explain on trying to me what the show is so steve austin best of the best had a show where basically his idea was to find the toughest athletes in america and you're getting athletes from all different walks of life. You know, it could be a coal miner. It could be like a, like it could be a 400 meter, like, you know, Olympic hopeful. It could be a guy like me in adventure sports could be UFC guy. There's just athletes of all and women too. So, you know, we don't compete against the girls. You go in, it's pretty intense. The first time you show up there, you get through all the interview processes, you get in and you do not get to talk to anybody. You see everybody and then they pull you away and seclude you in a van all day long. And then they'd be like, hey, come out. We're going to film for a second. And then they put you back in the van. 
So it's like very compartmentalized and you're like kind of held away. And then all of a sudden they're like, all right, we're going live in five. So the idea They don't want you to interact with the talents. Don't want you to interact with them. How do you even get on the show? It was interesting. So my friend had done an article on me for Men's Journal and he had also done another article on that show. And he just contacted the producer and he's like, dude, I just met this guy who's so perfect for your show. Like I just did a piece on your show. I just did a piece on this guy. Like you need him. And at first they didn't want me because I back then was like, even I was very small. I was a very full blown endurance athlete. I was kind of a slender pussy when I showed up. Thank you. They, they didn't want any like slender pussy. They didn't. They didn't want anything to do with me. Like the guys wouldn't even give me the time of day. They're like, this dude's gonna get mopped the fuck up. And you know, you got all these other dudes. You're just bra like beasts of men, just like big old boulder shoulders, hair all over their neck and backs and shit. Like they're just cavemen. And the idea of the show is there's this bracket. There's eight men. There's four competitions. So first competition, like the four men compete and then it's down to four. Then all of a sudden the, these four, uh, two and two compete. Then it's down to one and one. And then the champion of the whole bracket gets to go against the ultimate champion, which I eventually ended up becoming. And you compete against me either on a fight or you compete against my time on the course. So when I first showed up, there's all these beastly men that are there and I'm literally the lowest man on the totem pole. I won. I fought my way up and won everything. And I set the course record. And then the first year the season was done, like I, I made like 70 grand and Steve and I became pretty good friends because I had to go back and film all the time. And then they're like, man, we got to figure out a way to get this guy off the top. So now they started bringing me back in and they're like, now there's the all-star bracket. Now Hunter fights all the greatest champions of all time. And they bring back all these freaking freaks. Like the first fight I had was against a UFC fighter. I had to fight them all, made my way back through, won it again. Wow. And then I won the whole season on top of that. Third season, they're like, we can't fucking beat Hunter, so we got to put him on a pair with a chick. Then they all of a sudden brought us against pairs, and they brought all these other mutants, and I fought my fucking way through, won it again. And uh, what? But, where are they at now? I mean, How are just, they going to beat you now? I did, they canceled the show. They're like, three years, <laughs> three years in a row. I made like 215 grand, 195 or 215. Oh, it's a lot. Of, that's great. Yeah. That's great. And too. how long is the filming? It was pretty crazy. So we would be filming for like three weeks at a time oh, and okay. then three weeks off, three weeks at a time. So I would, I would be on and off there for about two months. And are you friends with some of the guys uh, that are like mutants? That, oh, as yeah. you call, you became yeah. friends with them. Yeah. I mean, because you had to be like Tommy Hackenbrook was a buddy of mine. This guy who's on the podium at the CrossFit games. He might have either won or was on the podium at the CrossFit games. Wow. Just looks like a caveman. Like his forehead is this wide. His face is like, just, it's just like a, like it's a, regular a, it's like a microwave <laughs> and it's just a block and everything about him is a block. And you just know, you're like, I don't want to touch that person. He's going to hurt me. <laughs> and we just became friends because he used to be the champion. Then I became the champion. And it just becomes these levels of respect because you end up, you know, even if we didn't fight, I would hate to be him and get dethroned. Yeah. Cause you're like, damn, I'm missing out on money now. Yeah. That's tough. You're though. kind I of mean, stealing jobs. I yeah, think. I am. I no. used to tell my competitors, this was my favorite. So when I first got started in sport, you know, 23 year old, you know, all cock and balls. Like I didn't use my brain at all. I was just all man. And I would show up against my competitors and they'd show up with their wives and their kids. And I was like, I'm going to beat the shit out of you and your kids are going to starve. Mm. And I'm they'd be fuck like your wife. But yo, but what? that kind of mentality is where it's at though. Yeah, we're yeah. all friends now. Like still, I, I still talk to him to this day, but I had to, I had to say that. Because otherwise I was like, I can't, I can't compete against this guy unless I do something to like hate him slightly. Of course. Right. Wow. I, I have to hate, to hate his me. children because I don't want to beat up a guy with a family. Dude, I, one of, one of his kids ended up like I've grown and known these guys for so long. One of his kids came to one of my races and paced me all the way to the finish line. Like we still are all friends, but of course, privately between he and I, I was like, you're going to starve. I mean, your family's sa- going to starve. Same thing as Colby. Remember when he was playing in the all-star game against his, uh, against his, uh, like what's it called? His teammate. And he and the guy pressed a, a, like a screen on him oh, yeah. and he pushed him like the guy Powell, whatever his name is, didn't think he would ever do that to him. But he checked him and yep. the guy flew. And then Kobe made a statement like, yo, I don't give a fuck. Competition's competition is competition. Like right. we're friends and friends, but you got a different jersey on. Just, just get scale. ready, baby, because yeah. where it's time to go. You know what I mean? And that's how you got to get down. And it's like people you're like, oh, how could you? But. If first you of really all, want to be the best. First of all, I hate that shit when people are like, when people were upset about Travis Kelsey yelling at the coach. 
Do you see that? Where he? Uh-huh. Do you, do you see yeah, that? Yeah, he's yelling in his ear. No, no, no. But you see that video where he kind of like catches uh, Andy Reid off guard, and he's like in his face because uh, they pulled Travis Kelsey, and yes. then the guy who yeah. uh, replaced them fumbled the ball, and so Travis Kelsey runs over the coach, and everyone on Reddit is like, "You never touch the fucking coach. It's so disrespectful." You're like, dude, it's just a bunch of millionaires. Like, I don't know what you're eating. thinking though when you you try to audit the decisions of these savages. Like these guys, not only are they playing the most, one of the most intense things you could ever do with your life, smashing into each other. There's millions of people watching, hundreds of thousands of people there. They're getting paid millions of dollars. They're all jazzed the fuck up. I'm supposed to be like, do that again yeah, yeah you keep my yeah. ass yeah, dude if you passion. watch old interviews of mike tyson the shit that he says he's like i'm gonna fuck you till you love me and you're like <laughs> if you try to think about that and be like why would he say something like that then you clearly don't understand the bigger picture Correct. this person is in a state of insanity yes. and you're you're just going to untether him for a moment and put him in a ring that you guys are all paying money to watch yeah, he's not a and s- then you're trying to judge him I the love problem those is they remove the they remove his identity in that moment, right? He's not a school teacher. You're like, bro, he's on a battlefield and he has CTE for a living. What the fuck do you think his reaction is going to be when someone on his team fucks up? Whether it's the coach, the ball boy, whatever, right? Yeah. Like, what do you want him to do? You want him to be a stone cold killer there, and then over here be like, eh. what's well, the Tom Brady thing? Also, they're like, why we thought that relationship was going to work? Come on, it's so lovely. You're like, what? <laughs> What? Uh, yeah. Are you talking about the the hardest competitor of probably our generation? Yes, correct. Like he he you expected this man to be normalized and go hang out with his kids? Like, no. That man is a crackhead, but his crack is a football. Yes. And yeah. I'm also my friends get mad at me. They're like, Val, you're too competitive. I'm like, my brother. I'm like, anything I do. I'm going to go at it the hardest I can. It doesn't matter if it's ping pong, if we're fucking throwing a quarter across the room. I'm going to compete and yeah. try to do the best I can. And yeah. my energy is going to be wild. I'm like, it's just, do you ever do that with your chick or do you let her win? She gets, she gets mad at me for that. By do you the let way. girls win? I just do the- sometimes. Like I'll like let her win here and there. But like, even when we play ping pong, She's like, you go so hard. She goes, why do you go so hard? And I'm like, well, because you don't make it fun. I'm like, because I wanted it to be a good time. I want some kind of, I mean, it's like going to play basketball with Michael Jordan. I'd be like, if we're going to play ball, like, let's at least have like a friendly game. I don't need you dunking on me and you be showing me your fucking I have to go all all in, bro. I I had to start dating girls that had a different lifestyle than me because it was just too much. It was too much. So fat girls. Yeah. Well, I do. I do love a good fit girl, but I I spent too much time. Fit or thick? Fit. 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 I do like a thick girl too, but like that's. That's a um, do you think, that's a momentary thing. That's do you a sexual, think that uh, fat girls have capitalized the word thick? Because I think thick used to mean like it's remarketed. Okay, like you used to, you're tight, but you're like mm, there's some meat on you, yeah. right? Like there's a, that's a woman versus like every fat girl just shows her ass in a thong, like oh thick, and you're like you're not, you're fat. No, you're fat. they've they've rebranded being chubby. Yeah, and there's there's girls that have thick bodies that are shapely, and there's girls that have thick bodies that are not shapely, and we all probably have our own interests. I know where I lean. Like I like a girl with shape to her, but you know what? the amount of guys that I know that are into heavy shit chicks is a lot higher than most people want to give uh, honesty about. Yes. Like they like thick girls. Isn't the famous line is like fucking a fat chick is like riding a moped is like, it's fun, but you don't want anyone catching you doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's essentially Got three yeah. in the garage right now. Right. No, like, I'm just <laughs> I've dated so many athlete chicks and it was like, it was cool to a point. But then when you have too much of that energy in the household, that usually ends up crumbling. Yeah, it's not good. Yeah, I don't want my girlfriend to have like bigger arms than me. I want to come home to somebody where it's easy, like not necessarily hey, let's go now compete against each other in yeah, something. Like, I agree. Let's go for a walk. Right. Or and you want to cheer on their lifestyle I agree so that you. there's no competition lifestyles, right? I won this thing. You can win that thing. We're both not competing for the same thing. So there's never a winner or a loser in our relationship. We can both be winners in our own fields. That's, what would be the ultimate goal for you, like in your business? Because out of curiosity. Sell this. Uh, I'm at the point in my life where all I want is peace. Like you said, in terms of, uh, I don't don't need to, I've given up on the concept when I was 25 that I'm going to have like a mega yacht and this fucking crazy shit. I don't want any of that because I know what that comes with. I know what the, the, how much I have to work to get there. And I'm more of a creative and less of a businessman. I know my faults. I'm, I happen to be a businessman, but I'm a better creative than a CEO. Yeah. 
Uh, so my goal is to build this as big as I can and then sell it to some retard or some brand that wants to hand me $50 million for assholes live forever one day. And I can just sail off into the sunset and just be done. You just want to move to Greece. I'm on the same way. Yeah. I believe a ton in this polarizing lifestyle of just this insane focus and intensity that I have now to have absolute freedom later. Yeah, and yes. because I've, I've given up a lot of freedom of my life and I don't act like I'm shackled to this like, you know, terrible lifestyle, Yeah, I mean, but I'm not doing what I, I really would want to do right now with my life, knowing that I can have it really have it yeah, later you're on. slumming in a Malibu. I get it. Yeah, no, 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 no. But I'm saying like, <laughs> even though I, I have the Malibu thing, there's a very pretty view, but I always am like on top of a bike while doing it. Like I'm not hanging out like 400 pounds in the morning on a front squat. Like, I'm yeah. saying that no matter what, we're still like, well, we're grinding, but we also are we lucky that we're lives. not grinding in mm-hmm. Gaza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, I love, is this considered Bel Air? This is, I hate to call it Bel Air, but I think it is. It is Bel Air. Yeah. Yeah. I like this area. Yeah, it's not bad. This house is a dump, but like this neighborhood's nice. Dude, it's sick. I mean, yeah. I like the views and also what you could probably be in Hollywood in 20 minutes. I don't live here. This is an office. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a full business. There's employees upstairs. There's a podcast studio, photo studio. We throw our, like, can you imagine living in a house where like 300 people a week piss and shit in? Oof. Like, you wouldn't want to live there. Where so do you live? I live in Sherman Oaks. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is That's the porn star 12, capital of the country, isn't it? 12 minutes away from here, Sherman, right? Yo, my nuts got clipped. I live in the suburbia. I went from living on 14th Street and 6th Avenue at the top of the pandemic. Like, I lived in New York with my girl. Literally the king of the town. Like you talk about New York, I was Mickey Mouse and New York was Disney. Like really? you couldn't go, I could go anywhere in that town. Tau, when, when, did you, when did you move out of here? 2020. Top of the, like literally the day the pandemic started, I had an apartment in West, in North Hollywood. Do you remember that gym called Pro Mix on 14th and 5th? Do I look like I know gyms? I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm just Unless assuming a guy named Jim. <laughs> I'm just assuming because of the work that you do, it's such a high profile space. It was really dope. And I imagine you may have just done shoots or known people nah, there. Like uh, when I was in New York, dude, I didn't get a, yeah, I, I stayed home until like 3 p.m. doing all fucking stupid. You would stupid make fun of me for working social out. Media. And then I would go out and get drunk. And You'd be have like, fun. Oh, Val, look at Val waking up in the morning doing push ups. Oh my God. <laughs> How'd you guys get to know each other? Um, J Date. Nah. Uh, basically, long story short, I, I was making uh, skits and clips, like funny videos with my mom. Yeah. Was, she's like a Ukrainian mom and it became like big, it started blowing up. And he was doing his parties at that time. I was like 20 years old and he watched one of the videos and he's like, Yo, you're a funny kid. Why don't you come out to one of my parties? And he's a photographer at that time. I didn't know anything from a hole in a wall and yeah. I wanted to have a college experience. My grades weren't that good. So I'm like, holy shit, like this party photographer fucks with my first hangout. Yeah. This party photographer fucks with me. I I got I better take this on. And to me, I was like, yo, I made it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like, because he was the superhero in uh in New York at that time. So I'm just like, all right, let's go. He, what was the first party you took me to? It was the wet dream or something like that party? No, I thought I took you, you to took the, me the to Cameron the, dude, concert. I expect to get a phone call next time he goes through a rager. I love it, dude. I mean, I live this lifestyle where I love to party really hard and then train really hard. Where did you balance your uh, addictions to then coming back to being able to be in an environment like this without spiraling again? So I overdosed on cocaine in 2024. Isn't an overdose usually result in death? Me? No, That's no, no. Recent. When I say like, oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. 2013. I was like, Sorry, whoa, I was like, no, 2020, <laughs> yesterday. I said, is he dragging 500 uh, pounds? That's a hospital no, 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 no. <laughs> Honestly, um, 2014. And no, overdose, like when I say that, I'm not, I wasn't like flatlined on a bed. Like my body had completely rejected it. I was like trembling, passing out, throwing up, like everything. The body was, yeah. yeah, it was too far. And basically I had a championship a week later and wow. I was racing against the two prior world champions of our sport. And I was running hard as fuck. And I was like right next to them, but I could feel like my heart was tearing at the seams. Like I truly stressed my body out very badly the week before. And I had this moment where I was like, this is my dream. I'm finally on the stage against the two prior world champions. And I came third to them, which is respectable for sure. But I have to have this decision. I was like, are you going to be the person that's always decent at partying and always pretty decent at racing? Are you just going to go all in? Correct. And the next year I beat both of those guys. And it was that decision. And like, you know, I still partake in almost everything, but I don't like, it's not my obsession. Like I just had a beer with you and I I have to train again this afternoon. That's not my issue. My issue is if I decide to all of a sudden, like give up on that ultimate focus and I was able to set both aside. So like I have beer drinking season, which basically just ended. <laughs> and um, like, I'll still show up at your party and have a good time, but like there's wild hunter and then there's world champion hunter and you have to, wear the different hat at different times. 
And like I'll spend all summer traveling across Europe and we'll have dinners until like one or 2 a.m. And these like the best crazy yeah. restaurants that are just like it's and you're just pouring wine. Right. You're not like shotgunning and funneling things. You, it's just a lifestyle. And if I came to your party and there's girls pouring, you know, beer down each other's ass cheeks and we're drinking out of it, like I'm not going to say no. I'll jump right in. I there respect that with the rest of the guys. I but, told, I told you he's you know he's he's a balanced human. He's a he he has he has a lot to that he's the human been experience. Yeah. I believe in that. Like yeah. you gotta have you gotta have some flavor to it because I just recognize I don't want to be this person when I get to my grave and say fuck, I didn't see the world. I didn't do anything. I didn't really have any meaningful conversations or live any days with the interest and flavor. Right. Because it is, I'm not going to lie. I don't get much more out of competing anymore because I've done it for so long. At this point, it's just, I'm finishing out a couple of years where I know I can set a high watermark, but there's not a lot of flavor left in it. I've squeezed out the juice. You well, did. right. The drug stops hitting as much, right? Admittedly. And you're an addict. So what's the next addiction? Business. Okay. I'm going to fuck shit up in business. Like well, anytime somebody sits down across the table for me and we start to have a discussion, I just say, listen, right now you see a seed and you know, it's going to turn into a small tree. And by the time you really pay attention, there's going to be a fucking huge Oak tree in your backyard and you can't put a picnic table back there anymore. You can't put an extension on your house. It's too strong of a tree to chop it down. Cause you'll get sued by the city. Like you're fucked. I was like, I'm going to be there. I'm like, I'm the young version of you where you were 20 years ago, but I'm better. And I love having that conversation. Ooh, that gets me kind of horny, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of all kind of gets me going. Dude, I love that. And that I just say, just wait until I retire. You're so fucked. I love, that's the shit that I fuck with the most. That's, yeah. my, that's my flavor right there. And it's not malicious by any means. Right. Like if you and I started competing against each other, I would respectfully just say, man, I'm like, Asshole is Forever is a sick brand, but I cannot wait until I have more shelf space than you and fucking Spencer's or wherever you sell your shit. But that's how I think. Right. And as you should. That is, that gets he me thinks cranked. like that too, but on a different, yeah, I just, different I don't, terms. I see, in I'm different a, terms. I'm, I'm, I didn't, I don't have that gene. I have that gene without talking about it. That's exactly. the one thing I lack. Yeah. That's the one thing I lack. I wish I had is that confidence. Well, I'll tell you, man. Because I, that's like, I have that confidence in here, but I always am like, oh, I'm just going to let them underestimate me. But and every time he, I, but every time he crushes something, you see him. He'll be in the corner, like got him. Like yeah. so, he he'll do that. Like yeah, he'll do that. Like he conspires in in the corner, kind of by himself. Yeah, I'm a but creepy, he's, shady. But Jew. he's not I'm gonna like, be in front of the in front of you and be like, yo, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. Um, he just looks at you and he goes, all right. He goes, let's just. He I goes, respect me, that version of business too. Give me a couple of weeks. I know? just come from the uh, lane of like Macho Man Randy Savage. When he's up there, this tattoo is of him. I think it was March, Ma uh, like March Madness, whatever the fuck it was. Why am I getting the name of this wrong? Uh, whatever. It was one of the biggest tournaments, and he was in Detroit, and he's standing in front of like 100,000 people in his underwear, just standing in front of all of them, letting him know that he's going to be the ultimate champion. It's a fake sport, but he's got the entire arena believing that he is the ultimate world champion of all men. Right. And he's in his underpants of all things, the most vulnerable position you could be in. And Correct. they're yeah. the gayest go, of all. Yeah. It's just crazy. But you have to be in that position where you're like, I can't just slightly believe in this. I have to stand in my underpants in front of everybody and let them know. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's, that's, how you, that's how you, that's how you get to a place like that. You yeah. Know? You have to really, be I just vulnerable. do You do it vocally. I do it. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know how to say it. He's an athlete though, you know? So it's like, it, you, you have, to, have, do to, it. Yeah, you have to, you have to carry, carry that it. like adrenaline yeah. through. Cause if you were like passive about it, they'd be like, what is this guy? Right. Because your, your, your package is already. So like, you I see, want, like, I want that. You look at me, one. you're like, Oh, Kirill's going to do it, but he's going to do it by faking his own death. That's how he says he's number one. And that, you know, like I have marketing strategies that I play into because I can't go. Well, that's the interesting thing about business. And I think it's going to be a lot more exciting for me is because it is so much more of a dynamic sport than what I'm in. Mine's very simple. Like I have to get my heart rate up. I have to lift a certain amount of weight. I have to push it for a certain amount of time. That equation I figured out. And that's why I'm the best with business. There are people like you. I haven't figured out how to read you yet, but you're right. so successful in the way that you've done things. You've amassed 150 employees in this big ass brand, which is awesome. And now I have to figure out because psychologically in my sport, I can tell when you walk in the way in the room and the way that you position your eyes, the way that your hat is, the way that you're dressed, I know how to beat you right away. I can see everything about you from the way that you shake my hand and the clothes that you're wearing. I know everything about you. I'm a psychological savant. Right. I don't know that in business yet. 
and I'm gonna obsess over it. I bought all these shitty books and I watch people Dude, and I ask yeah. questions. Like that's an addiction that's my probably next one. See, that's I'm also the same way as you when it comes to that stuff. I also love to just you know scan the whole room see who's the weak who's the weak one who's the strong one yeah i'm the that's my favorite shit oh, just i'm always just looking for scammers that's scammers? my biggest thing i hate being around scammers i've been scammed so, a couple so times i when I, I yeah i just uh I, I, would you say like you scan a room like when you walk into a party you're like all right who should i be fucking with who no should I not, be? not like that i scan the room and i know who is who right away the meaning like if i see that you're either about it or you're not whether it's discipline with anything you know, I'm big on discipline. Like if I, even if you're doing, if you're the best at fans, I'm like, all right, this person has discipline. And I, I will make sure to read that through the room because I want to be putting right. myself it's just, around. It's harder to tell I have discipline versus easier to tell he has discipline. I got scammed yesterday. I got contacted what I thought was the full send podcast, which doesn't seem like that crazy of a thing. They oh, reached that was out. Us. Was it really? Okay, no, no I, was like, I was like, I was like, they reached yeah. out. They sent us this whole schedule thing. And I was like, I'll take a call just to see if we can line this thing up. And it was just some like dude from fucking Pakistan or something like that on the other what line. What? How did he make money? Uh, I'm assuming probably they were going. I, I tried Booking to ask. But what's that? Yes. They're probably like, yo, we can get no, you they on were the offering me money. They were offering me money and all this kind of stuff. But I was like, there's going to be one of these kind of things where like, hey, listen, you're going to get this, but you're going to need to pay for this. Like also, it's like a licensing fee to be part of this. Like, I'm sure they're going to try to get me for 250 to 500 bucks. But I was like. Wow. Like I, I kind of turned on by it a little bit. I was like, so what do you, where do you want to go with this buddy? He's like, we, we will no longer have you on the show. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like thanks Kyle. Ah, I can't. <laughs> Yo, it's so good. <laughs> Got to respect the hustle though. I almost chipped my tooth with this mic just now, by the Did way. Did you really? I'm fucking rock myself. I also like that you changed one horse shirt into another. Dude, you like that? The double pony So swag? can you tell us about the pony thing? What do you, what's this whole thing that you're the best pony? You're Ball the biggest. Pony? Yeah. So like, you know, I'm, far larger than the guys I race against. And I've always tried to put myself into the little slipper that is demanded of us to be in this sports. Like I was jamming my fucking foot in it. What do you I'm, mean? Whoa, 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 like, whoa. So if you want to be a real successful runner, if I took you into a room of all the best runners in the world, they are probably about 70 pounds lighter than me and anywhere between like, you know, three to seven inches shorter than me. They pretty much look like me. Because what he said, so much a I literally thought that you had to fit your foot in a smaller shoe. No, 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 no. I'm just when saying kind of like smaller a, a, a slipper. I'm like, you guys race in slippers? No, 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 no. I'm just saying so metaphorically. Yeah, but okay. I got just, it now. I was jamming myself into a lifestyle that wasn't meant for me. And, you know, you know, you think about racehorses, all this kind of shit. And people are always like making fun of me. And there's like, you're a fat ass. Like that's, we tease each other. Like I'm saying, I was like, no, I'm not a fucking fat ass, dude. I'm the bulk pony. I'm about to fuck your ass up. And I just came up with this idea that I'm just like that Clydesdale horse and I will fuck you up. I was like, I may not look like you, but I will dominate you. I don't care what you fucking think the human body does. I will prove you wrong every time. And I just got psychologically jazzed up about this idea. Horse. You're dude, like a horse. Awesome. Did you ever see that old video, Mr. Hands, that dude that got fucked oh, by a horse? That dude. should be your walkout video. And That's if right. You were it's just like in the background like, broadcasted. You, oh, did you ever see that video? No. You never seen this video growing up? Dude, you uh, know you that guy was like a Ukraine. Boeing executive? Big deal. Dude, there's this, there's a horse video where it mounts this dude and put, it, we're talking about the same one, right? And yeah. you hear the pop in his ass and it just kills the guy instantly. This horse's dick he just get like up against the fence and the horse just mounts him. Oh, oh I've never seen that before. Yeah, no, it was thank God. That, should be your, like, that should be your walkout video. Be like, you guys can help me out. Fucking... You got a good media team. Let's put this together. <laughs> and but, uh, uh, I know that we've stretched this interview for a while, but uh, just before we end, I wanted to ask you, what do you mean by biceps win races? Well, that's another good story. Wait, wait, what? what did you say? His My motto. slogan is uh, biceps win races. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to figure out how that makes sense because biceps technically don't really have much for races. So this is another one of those stories. One of those two guys I raced against the week after I overdosed, Hobie Call. He's been my mentor, nicest dude in the world. He's, a, I always called him a chicken nugget with legs. He's such a tiny little person. He is a tiny person. And he would fuck me up in races because he just had this incredible engine and he had just the right amount of strength to get everything done that he wouldn't fail. And then he would just take off. We finally were at my hometown race in Malibu, 10,000 people competing, big ass show. I, this guy's been whooping my ass for the past year, year and a half. I'm like, fuck, I got to get him. He's always about 30 yards ahead of me. I just always kind of see him ahead of me, cutting the corner. I'm just kind of chasing, like panicking. We get into the, like basically the, um, the entrance area of the entire air, like sport where everyone signs up for the races and the finish line is. 
and there's three obstacles to finish. And it's like kind of like, you know, the big celebration. There's the rope climb to get to the top. We could both very easily do that. Then there's the next thing called the Hercules hoist, which was a bunch of sandbags attached to a rope and you hoist it all the way up. Hobie could do these things with his, one of his arms tied behind his back. It had dumped rain the weekend uh, and everything was soaking wet. And we get up to the top of the rope. He gets up and drops down. Is already on the Herc hoist before me. And I was like, there it goes. I lost another fucking race. He starts hoisting it up, but it's just too wet and too heavy. And I get over there and I just halt the thing up, rip it off the ground, boom, blaster. It's the first time I've beaten the world champion. It's the first time he's ever been beat. And I just walked across the finish line flexing. And I just screamed biceps when races because it was only my arms that won that race. That was- and it was one of these kind of moments where it's like, it's very obvious that my arms are not doing the work, but when it counts, I'm going to put more muscle in than anybody else. I'm going to be the fucking champion. I get it. And only compete after a rain. Yeah. Only that's only, a, you guys. Know, I only do rain. rain you, my friend are the genius of the story, <laughs> but yeah, it was, uh, it was it changed my whole life. That's been my motto and kind of globalized ever since. I mean, I guess you got to say there's something to say about a guy who doesn't need, cause you're saying biceps don't win the sport. In, in theory, you don't need biceps, the right? Mindset. What? But the <laughs> fact that this guy shows up with biceps, meaning he has trained so hard that even his muscles, he doesn't even need to use are Correct. Bad. But that's yeah. his whole point is that no. I don't need to be lighter. I don't need to be smaller. I like that. Yeah. You show up over prepared. Yeah. Dude, do you, are you friends with all these like influencer dudes? Like I'm sure if you're friends with Sky, like the Bradleys, all these people that are inside this space. I'm an old school influencer. I'm like five years before all those kids. Okay. But then I got kicked off Instagram after my Netflix documentary. And that's, I lost all my momentum. Really? Because I had the American meme. It was like me, Paris Hilton, Khaled, all those people in this documentary. And I was scooping up so many followers when it dropped on Netflix. It was like, number one, I literally, everyone in my DMs, celebrities hit me up because they're like, yo, we fuck with your story. We love everything you do. And Why'd then they shut you down. I run an out of pocket Instagram account called slut whisper. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like aggressive. I make off collar jokes. I post, you know, half naked girls, but it That's was like the entire internet. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. But I got clipped. I got clipped and it took me five years to get the account back. And by the time I got it back, the which momentum, I have like a million the, the followers dropped, now, yeah. it's different, right? Like all those kids, fuck with me i'm sure yeah because they're of the internet and when they were coming up they're like oh you know i was one of me fat jew fuck jerry and four other people were the only people influencing I in like 2000 and fucking 15 dude that sucks i don't get that like how is there not more i've know so many people who have had the same situation as you how is there not more of a straightforward situation to get your content back and like get your rights i mean i get it but it's a private company that essentially is almost like a yeah. Everyone has Instagram. It's almost like a mailbox now, right? It's like we should, you shouldn't be able to kick anyone off this platform anymore yep. because it's so big. It's like having a, it's like just getting kicked off. Like, oh, we're removing your social security number now. Yep. You're going to be like, dude, what am I supposed to do in life? I don't know if you guys are interested in books, but you should read Elon Musk's new book. And the whole section about Twitter is mind blowing. It's terrifying. Like yeah. the, the, the structure that they had going on in there and the way that they were, basically swaying where it, Twitter is the most transactional internet piece in the entire world. As far as social media goes, the amount of tweets and interactions that are yeah, going on, right. it's, it's unparalleled. Yeah. Because, and they were basically altering the messaging and where it was going and silencing people and all this kind of genius. stuff. And he, he went in and just gutted the whole company. Yeah. yeah. And it's not making any money anymore. And that's the problem. The, w- capitalism at the end of the day is what made Twitter, you know, all those things they were doing, they were doing strictly for business. They weren't doing to, you know, if they were trying to control narratives, it was clearly for financial gain. Yeah. That's why like, but what's the know, financial gain on you? Like, why would they take out you? Oh, because I don't make Instagram any money. That's the problem with the app. If Instagram found I a think way you do though, man, because you, how many people were engaging with your pieces? Because if it, I, it doesn't, I it doesn't matter, yours, but it doesn't matter, dude. It's like, I'm just like, boom, another influencer will just pop. I, I don't, I'm not necessary to the ecosystem, right? Fucking Rob Kardashian is banned still because he fucking like, what do you do? He leaked what's her face's nudes or thread black, or whatever. Uh, black right? like, yeah. Rob Kardashian, Kim Kardashian know. can't get her brother on Instagram. He has a lifetime ban because he uh, violated one of their terms. Like it's, they could do whatever they want and it's all, and it's, it's just dumb. Like, it, it, mm, I don't know. I would do the same thing though. If I ran a social media network and you know, 
a credit card company processor calls me and they're like, yo, you want to accept credit cards on Instagram? You better clean up the site. I'm gonna be like, cool, get rid of Carrillo. I don't need him. I'm running a billion dollar industry. I don't need a guy with a million followers fucking up some deal. Right. So they got a, you know, when Pornhub had their cleanse, it's just like at the end of the day, it's just business. I get it. I hate it, but I get it. If I ran the, I block fans all the time. You have I don't interesting opinions. Sh- I don't let people. He does. Sh- dude, I'll block. If he's you, very like, dude. If you complain about my brand, I'll block you from shopping on my store. I can like ban your IP address. Right? I'm not gonna so, lie. Like, I'm it's, thoroughly I'm impressed. I, I'm not very good at listening and respecting people unless I really end up like being around them a fair amount of time. And you swayed me on two different things. You just got to wear someone else's shoes for a second and be like, oh, I understand. It's just business. Like, no one's out to get Kirill. It's like, get rid of this because it's fucking up something else. Also, for us. Though, another problem is his personality on the internet is complete opposite of who he is in person. That's another issue in a way. Because I get the same thing. Because him in person, the sweetest most inclusive guy you'll ever meet on Instagram. It sounds like I'm a rage, raging alcohol. No, like, if I want to make a good party. trans joke, like that doesn't make me anti-trans. It just means that shit made me laugh. And guess what? Everything in life has a victim. So stop. Yeah. Like stop. Be a strong I man. Just, I just like chaos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And he, he does have uh some of his analogies get a little out of hand, but most of his uh, perspectives are, they make sense. And he also had to, you know, mentally, you get me to a place where I had to realize I'm like, you know what? Well, I'm you like, know, some you of the hang shit out is- with me long enough, you're gonna start making. A few I'm coming back for jokes. some parties, dude. You gotta hang, absolutely. No, you gotta come hang out for sure. I, and no, when- I really appreciate you guys bringing me out. I literally connected with him. I saw he started connect, like he followed me, and I was just like, hey man, what's up? And I always kind of throw credit towards anybody I see hustling. I honestly thought that you weren't gonna come on. I was like, oh, Hunter's not gonna come on. And then I was like, you know what? I'm like, and then he hit me back. Did you I, send him I, a photo of your abs to be like, look, I'm really sick, bro. serious. Best no, because he doesn't. He didn't follow me. He just kind of. He just saw like the, whatever. Who has better just, abs? Him for sure. I'm, he's way more. What are you body per, uh, percent body fat right, right now? Are you eight? You're eight. You're eight percent. What do you think this body fat percentage is? I'm gonna Let's give you twenty one. No, you're like a twenty four. You think so? <laughs> yeah. If he stood up, was the last girl you fucked have titties like this? <laughs> Not nearly, dude. You got the bod of a star. <laughs> yeah, that's that's uh, that's what he. Used when to you do. ask, like, do guys fuck fat girls? It's like, yeah, guys like me. No, he used to probably hit this at college. I think. I think. What? I think before college or right by college, he was. Does doing- this room get pretty crazy sometimes? This room? Yeah. No, nothing. No. We're really. trying to be you two, dude. No, this we're is very, the business. This, the is, business. this is a side of the business where there's no fucking this around. Business. This is. We don't. We barely. I think we've interviewed like two porn stars or one porn star actually throughout yeah. this entire time. We're trying to really. This is actually part of the business that we're trying to keep very aligned cool. and clean. And that's why we want people that you have a lot of versatility to you. You're a businessman. You're you're an insane athlete, but you're also you have color. You're very fun. You have a lot of things to offer in sense of humor and your perspectives. Yeah. So you fit the the mold perfectly because you have so much to offer. But there's many people that are in that space. They're kind of like Ugh! like you know, robots. Like homie, come on. Like that's why it's called ugly on the inside. We know you have shit at home that you do that. Is not perfect, right? So it's like I love the raw honesty of conversations like this because I think what it does is it breaks down walls around a lot of other people around you. And you know, I don't sit here and try to like formulate stories that are going to blow people's minds off. Like we've just been having a conversation, and the world is so crazy these days. Where like you could be something that happens in this room could destroy us. Well, yeah, because most most things in the internet exist for thirty seconds with zero context. Oh, I know, dude. They but if you listen to this bite. episode. Right. You'll be like, oh, they're having a good time. They're discussing shit. It's a it's a hang. But you pull a clip about being like, oh, yeah, I'm built like Hitler wanted us to be built blue eyes and gorgeous. You're like, yeah, like out of clip modes, you can literally paint to what reality but TV that's is, why, right? Editing. Yeah, but that's why the Internet sucks in that sense. Right. Because everybody has to put on a persona and has to follow a, sh- a strict code. And there's not a lot of places where you can just have a regular. Talk. Well, the Internet, just, like, just the chill. Internet used to be a playground. And now the internet well, is a business, well, because it's right? Cold. So yeah. the playground used to be fun and no right. one had to worry. Now everyone approaches every post as like, how does this affect my brand? Right? Like, like it's a 19 year old girl logging on a TikTok has a brand now, whether it's her is the brand or some fucking garbage she might sell. But a 19 year old girl 10 years ago will go on TikTok or whatever platform and just have fun with the platform. But now everyone's literally being like, how do you guys feel about TikTok? I don't, dude, they don't use touch it. it. Don't they, touch use, it. I, they post the content. They make it go viral. I have no idea how we, it works. Our TikTok is actually our strongest right now. And, I'm sure, dude. I mean, it's one of these kind of things. We get millions of views on there, which is great. Um, but 
TikTok. <sighs> TikTok is what basically is the problem, right? Because after TikTok, there's going to be something else and there's going to be something else. And, and then, then they're going to keep competing and it's going to get shorter. It's going to get, it's going to be more ADD. Like you said, it's going to be jumping around. The long form is a superpower now because the people that are connected to this and committed to this are fucking in. Yes. They're not just seeing you for 13 seconds and swiping on, dude. dude. Like anybody who's taking the time to follow through on this podcast is going to be a true fan of what you guys are selling, what you're up to in your runs, what I've got going on in my competitions. Yes. They so that's connected. why, that's why, this podcast like you're like oh how crazy is it get in this room it's like everything outside of this room is chaos yep. everything in this room is really well at least me i don't know about val i wanted to be put in a box and have rules because i thought For okay me too, yeah. maybe instead of complaining about not being free i should embrace the structure and see if i can excel in something that i hate right? The rules, the shackles. So when we go in this room and when the episode has to get bleeped and censored for YouTube, yes, I'm playing someone else's game. I'm playing into what they want, but Hey, I it's want this to be, though, su you I want to be successful. So you can I want to be game. successful so that I can interview you so that you come back and be like, yo, I sold X amount of things because I was on your podcast, right? We want to build a platform Positive, that yeah, has some, value. Right. That's not just like, yo, we do whatever the fuck we want. And then they're like, nobody's watching. And you're like, yeah, that's of no value to anyone then. Yeah, All I exactly. ask is about three to six months, you guys bring me back on so we can have another one of these things and see where we got. I like yes. that. That's cool. I will have, have, well, you don't have to ask. We would love. We would. The love only difference is I'm going to have abs. You guys will be the same. <laughs> guys, we're going to have a competition. All right. Can we're we see who's covered the most ground. Yeah, and can uh, we also take you up on that offer for Malibu? Because I really oh, want to come by at 100%. 5 a.m. and do a workout. I need yep. that in my life, dude. Please do. Honestly, I think like, it's one of these kind of things. I'll be quiet. You yeah. just tell me like Val, go kick it, rocks over there in the corner. If you can show up, that's the most important thing. We'll figure out something for you to do. Cool. Yeah, that's you included. Oh yeah, I can you're not the dodging books. this bullet. I'm a Jew. What do you want me to do? I'll keep track. I'll be like 16, 17 push-ups. Calling commentary. And listen, I I'll bring some value for the mullet. I'll take care of your mullet for you. I'm very good at uh, cutting hair. Do you see how confident you are at uh, talking about working out? Yeah, that's one, your style. I'm one of the best barbers you'll have. I like this in your life. I need to get. I'll show head. you guys a picture. <laughs> yes, I, I need to get some. Thanks I, for the advertisement. <laughs> I, have to, I appreciate it. I need to get my flow and volume back. I quit the mullet because everyone got into it, but I have a special mullet, like a He-Man mullet, that holds this essence and power of these golden locks. I've seen the video. And I got to bring it back. Easy. All right, boys. Yeah, I'll take that's care not of a commitment. I appreciate you guys having Dude, me on the yeah, show. Thanks for being Thank you for thing. pulling up. This was a great talk. We, uh, I loved it personally. And I think there's a lot Hell of yeah. so much, so much versatility, and that's what I was looking for. I think it was just great. I'm kind of motivated. I want to get in shape. I want to have abs. <laughs> I'll set you guys up. I brought you guys some water bottles, some stuff, everything like that. Oh, oh for real? that's dope. No, I'll get you abs. <laughs> I want abs. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll get it, dude. And if we can get you to clap, clap out. One more time for the audio. This. Oh wait, do you want to plug like anything? Yeah, like, by the way, like, do anything, you want to your, plug anything? Your your brand supplements. Any, yeah. Anything. Uh, thank you for that. Um, honestly, guys, like if you want to find out anything that I'm doing, it's Hunter McIntyre on any social media channel. How do you spell that? People, there's a lot of McIntyre spellings. M C I N T Y R E. When if you the, type in Hunter and then an M, or we've worked our asses off, you will find it pretty I'm much. I'm such an immigrant. I don't even know how to pronounce it. I didn't know how to pronounce. It. That's why you I better be careful with Hunter M. Do you remember a Hunter Moore? No. Back in the day, dude's in jail for stealing girls' nudes. He had like a huge website. Jeez. He was oh, basically I think I heard about this dude. Yeah. Yeah. He had an, they had a whole thing about him, didn't they? On yeah. Netflix? Yeah. yeah. The guy was the biggest asshole in the world or something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, dude. Our, our companies are Builder Sports. It's our nutrition company. We're global. So if you want to order almost anywhere in the world, we can get it to you. And that's all I pretty much care about. I also want to respect my sponsors. I work with Represent. They really put me on the map. They believed in me and helped me get around the world. And Puma also. Super dope. Boys. Boys. Dude, thanks for being here.